Good morning, YouTube. <clears throat> this is Johnny. Time to make a video. I noticed this morning, well, it is um, October the 5th here in West Michigan. It is 8.28 in the morning. It is uh, 70 degrees inside the Hermit Hut. It got in the 40s last night and we had to turn the heat on. But right now it's kind of partly sunny out. It's been kind of cold and rainy and gray most of this week. I was going to make a video video yesterday, but I just never got around to it. Friday reads and um, basically what I'm going to do in this video is just show you what I read yesterday and some thrift store books I got. I think it was Wednesday. Wednesday, I <clears throat> I think I mentioned uh, I got together with a friend of mine here in Holland I hadn't seen in a long time. And we went out for breakfast and coffee and then we went to thrift stores on, it was like, I think it was Wednesday. And so I got some thrift store books, used books. But Friday reads, like once again, I'm still in kind of a, in the mornings, I can't read, I can't, I just want to write and sit in the mornings, not really use my brain. So, but what I've been reading in, in the rest of the day and the afternoon and the evening and night hours is, um, well yesterday I was at the library used bookstore, the book nook, where I volunteer and I've been reading this pretty steadily. I think I showed this, How to Disappear, a memoir for Mis Misfits by Duncan Fall Falwell. I got this book on Inner Library Alone. I came across it. I came across Duncan Farewell, Falwell on the um, YouTube and he wrote a memoir. He says here, Duncan Falwell writes novels, history, autobiography, travel, libretto, lyrics, and journalism. Most recently, he is the author of the novel History of Facelifting and the travel book Going As Far As I Can. His essays, interviews, and reviews have appeared in a broad range of magazines and journals including Vanity Fair, Playboy, The Paris Review, Esquire, Harper's, The Times, The Guardian, and Prospect. He is based in London. For more information visit his website. So I've been reading this because it's due. I can't keep it forever so I'm just gonna, I just, it's kinda like a light read so I've been reading this and Primarily, I'm still re reading Duck's Newburyport, Lucy Elman. I kind of try to read at least 20 pages of this book a day. I'm on page 391 this morning. <clears throat> so that's basically all I've been reading. I mean, really, because I can't think of anything. I can't think of anything else I've been reading the last two days. Since I made a video. Now, oh, I did read something else at the book nook. I forgot. I did when I was at the book nook yesterday. I saw this book at the book nook and I bought it. It's called In Fact: Essays and Writers in Writing by Thomas M Malone. And I did read from here his essay on on uh, Will Self. Uh, yeah, he has uh, Working with Writers. I read him uh, on Will Self. And I also read him on Steven Spender. These two writers and where he... Yeah, this is the one on Will Self. It's called A Measure of Self-Esteem. 
this is on the, he's kind of, uh, now this was written, in this, that article was on 1999, so that's a long time ago, almost 20 years ago, and Will Self has put a lot of writings out since then. Uh, uh, I have coming in the mail, Will Self wrote a memoir called Will, that's coming out, that I have pre-ordered in England, which is coming in the mail, but this came out, this piece that he wrote, this essay, Thomas Malone, that he wrote on reviewing some recent literature by Will Self, was written 20 years ago, so. Anyway, I was, I did read this yesterday, a couple of essays on uh, Stephen Spender, who I've been reading his journals off and on the last couple of weeks, and he... Also, I think I read here on uh, something else. Anyway, I did read something else yesterday. Was, um, in fact, essays on writers and writing by Thomas Malone. I collect his writing. He's ma he mainly writes historical novels. Dewey Defe defeats Truman, Henry and Clara. And he's written a historical novel on the Nixons, Reagan, I think on the Bushes historical novels centered around those presidents, something like that. I was going to bring them up, but I forgot to bring them up from the lower level, but I did read this yesterday, which I got from the book nook. I bought it. I also got from the book nook yesterday, this book, The Measure of Things, Seven Year Odyssey That Transformed the World by Ken Adder. <clears throat> It's uh, it's basically this the history of how the metric system was developed. Don't know much about it. I just grabbed it because it looked interesting, and it was only two dollars. So. I also I should say I got these from the book nook from my wife yesterday. I got these uh, Laura Ingalls Wilder, the little ha little house on the prairie books. I got these for her. She collects children's books, and this is Laura Ingalls Wilder's little house in the big woods. I got, and then I got Farmer Boy by Laura Ingalls Wilder. And then I got On the Banks of the Plum Creek by Laura. Ingalls Water. Now, the reason why this attracted me is because if you read Duck's Newbury Port, she's always referring to the Little House on the Prairie books, Laura Ingalls Wilder. She's always referring to them. Now, I'm not sure if throughout the novel, because lately I haven't come across any, but she was mentioning them these stories and these books and Ducks Newburyport. But I got these anyway because my wife collects children's books. So this is the these Happy Golden Years by Lori Ingalls Wilder. Little Town on the Prairie by Lori Ingalls Wilder. The Long Winter by Lori Ingalls Wilder. And then the Shores of the Silver Lake. Now, I noticed the one I didn't have by Laura, In Wilder, Laura Ingalls Wilder is The Little House on the Prairie is not in this, these, uh, this set. Uh, I also recently picked up a biography on Laura Ingalls Wilder called The Prairie Fires, The American Dreams of Laura Ingalls Wilder by Caroline Fra Fraser. So I got those at the book nook. I haven't read this, but it was a winner of the Pulitzer Prize. Now, the fifth store books. I picked up this book by John Luca, Lucas Churchill, Visionary Statesman in History. I have five other books by him. He's kind of like, uh, he's written 20 books on history. Among them, The Hitler of History, The End of the 20th Century, and The End of the Modern Age. 
uh, Five Days in London, I have that one, May 1940, The Last European War, The Duel at the End of an Age, The Threat of Years, I have that one. I, I have, I collect his writings, this is one on Churchill. I had this already, this is by Sherman Alksey. He's a, uh, he writes poetry and he's kind of like a semi-Native American writer. He writes on Native American life. He's from a tribe in the state of Washington. I had this in an old paperback and I found a hardback. It says, I think in the back here, um, Sherman Alksey is the author of the novels Revelation Reservation Blues, The Indian Killer, The Story Collection, The Toughest Indian in the World, and the award-winning sc screenplay for Smoke Signals, as well as several books of poetry. His books have won the Penn Faulkner Foundation, Mohammed Mohamed Award for Excellency in Short, short Fiction, etc., etc. He lives in Seattle with his wife and two children. I picked this up at a thrift store. This is a memoir from a woman, a British woman, who was like a pioneer in aviation. She flew across the Atlantic. She, this came out in the 40s. West with the Night by Merle Markham. This is a very famous memoir, Hemingway, writes, written so well, marvelously well, that I was completely ashamed of myself as a writer. Mark can, can write rings around all of us who consider, them some, consider ourselves as writers. It is really a bloody wonderful book, Ernest Hemingway. And then I found Dear Theo, Autobiography of Minson Van Gogh by Ivan St Irving Stone. Then I found this by Simone Wheel, Waiting for God. She was kind of like a spiritual writer. Yeah, Rumbo Misbehaves, a novel by John Mortemeyer. I collect Mortemeyer, his books on Rambo. This is a little history of vintage Nuntic. It's on Nuntic Island up there in, the, in New England. This is ABC Whipple. It's a little, like a little History of Nantucket, which is mentioned, for example, in Moby Dick. Just a little book. And then I picked up this crime fiction by James Crumley, The Night Madness. And then I picked up this book by a Christian uh, writer, intellectual, God's Battle Lions, The Case for the Crusades by Rodney Stark. I collect Rodney Starks. He, he writes, he's like a Christian intellectual. He writes in all kinds of things. The Rise of Christianity. He's written all kinds of books. Uh, anyway, he's kind of an interesting writer, from a, a Christian writer. Also picked up this, The Horse's Mouth, a novel by Joyce Carey. So those are thrift store books I got. I, now I can put these down on the lower level. I got books coming in the mail today. I ordered some used book. But I've been primarily reading, like I said, How to Disappear, a memoir for misfits by Duncan Falwell and reading Beck's Newburyport, writing in my diary. I'm on page 804 this morning. And today is a Saturday. I'll watch college football. And yet my wife called last night. She'll be coming back Sunday afternoon. She called me yesterday at the book nook. I was, she called me because she was at a used bookstore there in Wisconsin and she was at the, the bi biography section and she was going through all the different biographies and she asked which ones I wanted, if I wanted any of them. And there was a biography on Norman Mailer that I asked for 
and a biography on Raymond Carver, which I found out when I got home I already had it, so now I have two copies. But the Norman Mailer biography I didn't have. I collect Norman Mailer uh, because I'm he's along the same time as Susan Sentang, John Updike, Philip Roth, Mary McCarthy, all those kinds of people, the new intellect the New York intellectuals, the sixties, things like that. So yeah, I'm doing okay. I hope you're doing okay. I know I haven't been getting that many comments. But I have new subscribers. I do thank you for the new subscribers. Do hope you're having a good weekend. And yeah, not much else. It's been kind of quiet. Writing in my diary, watching the birds, sitting in silence, reading Ducks Newbury Port. I wrote, uh, I mentioned in a comment from Amy in Book Two that I, the other night, I collected a huge folder of material on Lucy Elliman and Ducks Newbury Port, but that could be a future video. I might not because I don't know. Uh, to me, if people really want to know more about Ducks Newbury Port and Lucy Elman, you just do what I do. You go online, you type in Lucy Elman, and you find out about her books, about her life, and reviews. I did order a second copy of Ducks Newbury Port. This edition was published in Canada, Windsor, Ontario, and I ordered a, a copy from the original publisher uh, there in Great Britain. I also ordered another novel by Lucy Elman called Mimi that came out in 2012 that I ordered from Amazon. I do find her writings interesting, uh, provocative, intellectually interesting but I don't think in 10 years that people will remember the novel <laughs> yeah it's hard to know what people will read 10 years from now 50 years from now you think of you think of writers back in the 40s and 50s how many people read them this morning I came across a writer named Nancy Hale H-A-L-E someone just put into a volume her short stories. She wrote 80 stories for the New Yorker, but she wrote memoirs, she wrote novels. I've never heard of her. And but that's the way it is in the 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 history of books. Books come and go, writers come and go. Bestsellers last for a, a year and then they're gone. But I'll sign off. I'll stop my rambling. I hope you're having a good weekend. And until next time, bye.